Aussies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's query comes from Robert Brown, KG5BJF. And he has a simple question. He is uh, in the process of buying a house and looking forward to get on the air. And he's going to put up some antennas and so on. The question he has is, how do you determine which lightning arresters are the correct ones to use? Well, Robert, if you look in um, uh, decastler.com slash reference, you'll see the list of all the materials for the reference station. There are lightning, there is a lightning arrestor in there that is recommended. And that is this one right here. Let's zoom down in on it and see what we can find, okay? We'll try it about there. This right here is an Alpha Delta, and the UHF connector means PL259. Okay, these are SO239s. And your PL259 connects direct to that. If you happen to be using N connectors on your, uh, your coax, and your rare ham if you do, um, although some do, there's some who are quite uh, adamant about it. But anyway, most people use PL259. They do have an end connector version. Now, this is made of stainless steel, uh, these parts here. And this connects to your ground rod, and I'll show you how in just a minute. Now, there are two of these available. They're uh, $52 from DX Engineering. Okay. And these are the 200 watt versions. 200 watts means they have a lower um, voltage at which they'll arc over and protect your equipment. Now, one nice thing about these type, the Alpha Delta, is if you are putting uh, DC through your coax, like to power a, a receiver preamp or to send something up to a uh, rotator or something like that. These work fine. They have DC connectivity all the way through. Okay, the way they work is there's a little gas-filled arc tube inside, and if the voltage gets too high, it'll arc over, and the voltage across an actual arc isn't very big, so most of the surge gets taken care of here, and it shorts out this side so that it doesn't get to your radio or whichever side, they're, they're uh, a uniform either side you can use. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention about this is that the, they don't show, there's a little knob on this side that you unscrew that you can put the arc tube in. The arc tube is self-resetting, but if you get a really strong one, it can uh, burn the thing out and it, it will, it's supposed to fail closed, thus protecting your equipment. So if all of a sudden you're getting nothing on a channel, go out and check that plug and see if that's the case. If you run it without the plug, you have no protection. Now, I will mention that in the event of a direct lightning strike, all bets are off, okay? Uh, they can do very strange things if you get a direct strike. But uh, these are for very nearby strikes. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, voltage induced on your antennas and it can be taken care of here and shunted to ground. Now this is the one on the recommended station list which is fine um, because the uh, ICOM 7300 which is the reference rig uh, is only a 100 watt rig so this is the perfect lightning arrestor for it. Now there is a version of this it's the same part number uh, from the front there, but this says high power, and it's 2,000 watts. So on all of the antennas on which I will use my amplifier, I put these. Now, if you have these, you can take out the 200-watt uh, little gas tube and put in a 2,000-watt gas tube. You can get the gas tubes 
separately at DX Engineering. Okay, I'm just using DX Engineering because they have everything. A lot of people are familiar with them. Okay, so these are the Alpha Deltas. These are the ones I recommend. However, polyphasers are very popular. Now, polyphaser is a little different. This particular one is 2 kilowatts, uh, VHF 375 watts. It's a DC block. In other words, there's not a straight-through DC connection. And the problem with that is like if you're using this to protect or receive on the antenna and you've got some DC on the line that uh, is uh, via a bias T, that is powering the antenna that will not go through here okay similarly the mfj mag loop that has the uh, tuner in the shack needs dc connections that's one of the reasons i prefer the alpha delta over the polyphasers okay polyphasers are also more expensive but they're also popular and you can get those two if you know if this is what all your friends use and you don't have any situation where you need to pass DC, uh, you could use the polyphasers too if you want. Okay. Now, what do you connect them to? Here's one option that could be put on the wall of your house right next to um, the ground, and one of the connections is to ground, and then the other three are for lightning antennas. By ground, I mean about this far away from ground. Okay because uh, you want it, uh, the wire to come down directly to ground. You can also use this particular device in your shack as your grounding bus. I just use a piece of a pipe. You see where it's got the little bend down here with a hole in it? I just hammered down the end of the thing, and twisted it with a, a pair of pliers, drilled a little hole in each and have mounted it over there. It didn't cost me a thing because I had the extra piece of pipe sitting around. Another thing you can do is get this type of a situation, which is what I have. Um, I have my lightning arresters mounted directly at the ground rod. Okay, so now this particular piece will hold four polyphasers. I believe it will hold six of the alpha deltas. Okay, these are polyphasers that are shown on here. And this sits at your ground, and you bring your um, coax to this. Make sure you go out every so often. These should be waterproofed, but go out every so often and retighten them because, with the normal vibration of just the sound of the wind, will cause these to slowly screw off. So, you want to tighten them. Now, uh, there's another thing you need to do. This is an example of it. This right here happens to be for my uh, Step IR control leads. You connect them. This will handle eight because you just need to connect it and wrap it around it. And it's got a um, uh, what do they call? These have got surge suppressors on each one. There's eight surge suppressors inside. This connects to ground, okay, right here. This connects to ground. Or you can put it at the bottom of a tower or something like that, and it'll protect the, uh, the control leads for your antenna, rotor, and so on. Okay, now where are these mounted? The actual lightning arresters are mounted outside the house on your station ground rod just before the cable enters the house, okay? You don't want lightning in the house. You want to keep it outside. You want it by the ground rod. So the lightning, which will follow the path of least resistance, mostly, um, will come in here and go down to ground. Now these, as I mentioned, are made of stainless steel, okay? Stainless steel with copper, there's a a long-term probability of corrosion, but normally stainless steel does not cause very much corrosion. There is some. Stainless steel is designed for 
like forks and knives and spoons. Uh, it's not really meant as a do-all, end-all for avoiding corruption. One of the problems is it's not as strong as other brands of steel that might be used, say, for building a ship. What you want to do, because you've got stainless steel, uh, as I showed earlier, you've got the uh, part that's stainless steel, that is, that is, and that is. Now you can't tell these away from the uh, galvanized aluminum, the lightly galvanized aluminum that you get. Um, I'm sorry, zinc coated, but I guess that is galvanized. Okay, um, stainless steel into stainless steel will tend to what they call gall, G-A-L-L, -L, the gall. They can be hard to get out. Okay, so what you do is you put a lubricant on them. And the lubricant you want is this right here. Jet Lube SS30 Pure Copy and Pure Copper Antices. Now obviously it's not pure copper. Because if it were pure copper, it'd be a solid. That doesn't do you any good. It is a neutral petroleum product that is filled as, as much as it can be with copper dust. And you put this in on all these parts where you've got aluminum to copper or even aluminum to aluminum. It's an anti-seize compound, so it'll keep it from galling. Plus the copper in there will make sure it keeps a very nice seal, okay? And this stuff is relatively cheap. This is the quarter pound. You can get a half pound for 30-something dollars. Okay, so there you have it. Um, these are the things I recommend for lightning arresters. Uh, there's a guy. Um, let's see if I can find him here. It's Kilowatt Foxtrot, number 7, papa.com, K7FP. They have some boxes that you can actually mount on the wall and then ground and then all your lightning arresters and everything are inside the box where they're protected from the elements. Okay, very good. I want to draw your attention to a fairly new feature of this channel and that is a giveaway, a one giveaway a month. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel and then it's time to thin the herd so to speak. So here I'm announcing my second giveaway to hams in the USA. And I say in the USA because priority shipping abroad is crazy expensive. Okay. The item to be given away this time is an antenna. And it's the myantennas.com NFED half wave 8010. It'll handle up to one kilowatt of single sideband. It's an NFED half wave. It'll give you part of 80, about 100 uh, kilohertz wide, down in the bottom end of the band, which is where the FT8 is. It will give you all of 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and the bottom part of 10, which is where all the activity is. You get the, um, it's an unun, actually, it's not a balun, it's an unun. Um, and there's a mounting bracket that comes with this, plus the clamps for to mount. And it's uh, got some impressive specs. Now, um, I bought this with channel funds. I tested it. It's a wonderful antenna. I was really surprised how well it worked. Um, it's a great antenna if you've got 130 feet across your property that you can put this thing up. Okay, here's how it works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, number two. Your name and call sign and shipping address. Please also include your phone number in case I have any questions. Please nothing else, though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. 
Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place uh, during the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on September 30th. Now, that means if you're entering by mail, the way the post office is going these days, you should mail it at least a week prior to the 30th, so the 23rd. Make sure it's uh, mailed by the 23rd. I don't go by the postmark. I go down to the post office on September 30th. I'll collect all the cards that are there and add them to the pile that I already have. And I'll shuffle them all up and we'll pick one during the live stream. Note that I pay the shipping, uh, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Uh, note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. Okay. For example, last month I put all the entries in the trash except the winning one, which I put in the box with the book that I gave away and sent to the guy who won. So I kept nothing. Okay. So, um, no information will be kept or transcribed. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to decastler.com slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Uh, I draw your attention to Patreon because if you um, become a patron through Patreon, uh, you will have early access to one of the videos during the week. Um, up to a week in advance or just a few days in advance but certainly in advance. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like and don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.